Oh my gosh, you are spot on. I haven't had a lot of sleep, so I'm going to try to keep it together right now. But um, yeah, it feels pretty bloody cool to be, yeah, world champion. It's awesome. And what a final. I mean, you're up against the defending and Olympic champion. You twice break your own national record. Both times Katie Moon comes back. 35,000 strong crowds going off. Can you just take us through that emotional roller coaster? How'd you cope? Oh my gosh, I don't know how I coped. You know, normally I crumble under pressure and, you know, last night I just held it together perfectly. Um, it was a battle back and forth for such a long time and it was just such a great competition. You know, I cleared 90 on my 490 on my last attempt and I thought, yep, like I've won it. Um, Katie's not going to clear it. You know, I, you know I'm, I'm celebrating them and then Katie clears it and my heart is like oh my goodness like we're gonna have to keep jumping um so then we had three attempts at 95 and neither of us cleared it um and then yeah we we had to have that tough conversation about what do we do are we having a jump off or are we going to split this thing just so just back to that moment we're just seeing you clear 490 and yeah you think you've got it there at that moment don't you I do. Yeah. I was like, I've won this. Hell yeah. She's not going to respond, but you know, she's an Olympic champ for a reason. And I, and I should have known she was going to do it. So you're watching on the crowd are clapping. Everyone's getting involved and cameras are on you. You're clapping as well because you don't want to look like that. You're not trying to be supportive. And then you see her do it. How much does it that take away and, and mentally uh, impact you as you're now trying to uh, stay uh, fight for survival in the final? Oh, you know, you're exactly right. Every single eyeball is on you and, you know, while Katie is jumping and you can't not clap for her and, you you know, you kind of have to keep a neutral face. So, yeah, it was um, it was a lot. I should, Like I said, I, I should have known she was going to clear it, but in that moment I had to switch back on. You know, I was back on the runway jumping 95 and, you know, Katie could have cleared it. 95 and could have taken you know taken the gold off me so i really had to just switch back on and then that incredible moment it's gone global and for all the right reasons of you both embracing having agreed to share first place just take us back to that what was said and the realization of what you'd achieved yeah so what was said you know my coach was like okay we're gonna have to go to a jump off like prepare yourself and i went over to the official and he was like yep you're gonna have to do a jump off and then you know i went to katie um and i kind of just said you know what do you want to do and she was like we're gonna have to jump 95 and then i was like well you know maybe we could maybe we could just stop jumping and kind of like take this thing for like both of us and you could just see the relief come over her face and she could see it on mine and yeah I think in that moment we both knew we yeah we actually had nothing left in the tank we were both exhausted and I think sharing the gold was actually the best thing to do. I think that's probably important for everyone to sort of quite understand you are literally exhausted after multiple jumps in what is such a uh, extraordinary grueling discipline but I guess there's some to say, we need a winner. Was there any regrets now in the cold light of day that you didn't go for a jump off and try and win solo gold? No, like no regrets at all. Um, you know, it's actually just a privilege to share it with Katie. You know, she's one of the goats of the sport and I've looked, her up, looked up to her for so many years. So it's really cool in that regard. I think in hindsight, um, you know, I cleared 90 with no bar touch. And if you watch her attempt, she really gave the bar a good wobble. So I think in hindsight, you know, maybe I could have had her in a jump off and I could have, you know, got that solo goal, but I think it just makes for a cool story. And I don't know, we're going down in the history books, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. What about this journey for you, Nina? It's often a lonely one. And as we mentioned, in such a grueling discipline, um, bronze before you endured that horribly impacted Olympic campaign in Tokyo, I can only imagine what sort of toll that can have mentally, let alone the injuries as well. So just tell us about this journey to be an overnight success. Yeah, you know, I, I don't really look at myself as an overnight success, I'm sure. Um, you know, it seems like that from, you know, Australia's point of view. But, you know, I've been in the top handful um, of girls in this sport for a while. And, you know, I came third at the World Champs last year and you know, that really cemented my kind of 
yeah, like I'm here, I'm ready to rumble, you know, I'm going to mix it with you girls. And then, you know, obviously you said in, in Tokyo, I had a really horrible campaign, you know, we got removed from the village, you know, I didn't even make the final. It was really disappointing, but, um, yeah, like you said, it is a roller coaster, but I do just approach it as, you know, this is my job and this is what I have to deal with. And, you know, people are like, wow, you know, you're so resilient. You're so this, but it's like, no, like, it's just, it's my day job. It's what I'm going to do. Like, you know, my, my self-worth and that doesn't depend on my results. And, you know, I'm just out here, like actually living a dream. So I'm pretty lucky at the end of the day. I hope the medal's under lock and key. Is it well looked after? <laughs> no. <laughs> It's like in my room and I'm sure it's like knowing me, it's probably unlocked. So, but yeah, it's fine. <laughs> All right. Make sure you got some sort of security on that if you don't mind. Uh, but just in terms of this confidence, surely now after what you've just explained so well as well, what is possible now with Paris around the corner? Yeah, you know, I think everyone is asking that exact question. You know, there is so many eyeballs on the Olympic Games. So, you know, my friends and all my family already have their tickets. You know, I've booked my automatic um, qualifying height for that. So I think anything's possible. And I think I really proved that to myself last night. Dreams really do come true. And, you know, I know I'm on the right path. I know I have the right team around me and... Yeah, I don't know what the possibilities are, but I'm obviously hoping for gold and, yeah, we'll see what happens in a year's time. That is all to come. We can't wait to see it as well. Uh, continue to soak it up, world champion. We'll talk soon. Nice. Thanks so much, Jim. I appreciate it.